Hello, my name is Dian Shang, an undergraduate student from G University in the United States. Today, I'm going to present my paper titled Thousand Concepts in Christiva's Cora. Let me share my screen. Okay, so before I get started, one of the interesting facts is that Christiva's core actually, this concept, um, she borrows from Plato's philosophy. So uh, because Kora is a Greek terminology, first, firstly established by Plato. But uh, Christiva's Kora is a little bit different from Plato's Kora uh, because in her work, Revolution in po Poetic Language, she mentions that Kora is a metaphysical receptacle or a metaphysical container that has a process of generating and negating. This is a different point um, from Plato's Kora. Well, um, what are the things that are generating and negating? Actually, according to Christiva, are the semiotic and the symbolic. The semiotic represents emotionality. The symbolic represents nationality. And then humanity must come from the perfect combination of emotionality and rationality, which means that the combination of the semiotic and the symbolic. So, uh, which means that uh, we cannot only have emotionality or only have rationality to form humanity. And then I found that Christina's Cora um, has some cultural exchanges, um, cultural uh, interpen interpenetrations with Chinese Taoism. And for Chinese Taoism, I mentioned Laozi and Zhuangzi. I don't mention Liezi because Liezi doesn't deal with this problem. So for Laozi, I refer to Laozi's matrix. In Chinese, we call it Mu Ti, Mu, the mother, the motherhood. And then I uh, use potentiality from Laozi's concept. For the branch of Zhuangzi, I refer to the concept of obscurity from Zhuangzi. And then my thesis comes like, Christiva's Quran and Dao's philosophy have cultural interpenetrations. And I separate it into three uh, little different points. First is Quran and Dao's matrix, and then Quran and potentiality, and Quran and obscurity. Uh, because I think that uh, Christiva's semiotic Quran is a really perplexing concept. So I think I need to explain it first. So Christina mentions this two uh, statuses, the semiotic and the symbolic. The semiotic, Christina says, uh, is also called heterogeneity. It's shown as the innate impulses or drives feeling in the body, which is to motivate desires and emotions. So uh, the semiotic is just like the primitive drives, the primitive um, impulses um, in this Quora. The symbolic actually is homogeneity. Doesn't it the movements and compelled or constrained by the capitalist mode? Remember that Kristeva actually he criticizes the capitalist mode because she found she finds that um, capitalist mode kind of leads the leads the um exceeded rationality in our humanity, which means that our humanity cannot be formed merely from rationality. We have to have, we have to use emotionality to um, fully develop our humanity. So, um, and uh, civilized society, all right? So the symbolic um, are the movements uh, that compel constrained by them that course is the subject to not only abnegate the ability to be a free agent, meaning that we don't have free will, 
but also obey the promulgated orders, like the promulgated orders from the civilized society, the, the capitalist mode. Yes. And what is Korra? Chris Devas Korra. Korra, like I said, Korra is a space or a metaphysical realm, metaphysical container that has a process of generating and gating. So the semiotic Korra um, is a receptacle where both the semiotic and the symbolic generate and negate each other. But here comes the question, why? Why does it call this the semiotic Korra, not the symbolic Korra? Actually, according to Kristeva, we call it semiotic Korra because Korra represents a primitive stage when emotionality and rationality are yet to precipitate. So, uh, which means that all the processes like generation and negation take place in Korra are cha cha um, chaotic preparations. Yeah, because the combination, because the um, the perfect harmony, the perfect harmony of rationality and emotionality are yet to precipitate. So we call this this stage semiotic. And then I'm gonna introduce Laozi's concept, the Taoist matrix. I call it the motherhood. So Laozi has two concepts, the unnamed and the named. So in Chinese, we say, so mu means the motherhood. So Laozi has the name that is the motherhood of the chaos. But what does it mean? But what does it mean? Actually, Wang Bi annotates, Dao De Jing annotates Lao's work. Um, he says that the named is like the, is the status that functions as generating and gestating from the chaos to everything in order. So the named or the motherhood is the point, it's the birthplace, it's the place that, that, um, that um, gives lives to everything. So the spot of the motherhood, like Lao Tzu says, is the root for the universe. We, in Chinese, we say that Xuan Pin. Pin is the, like the female, the motherhood. Xuan Pin, like, all right, this is the metaphysical motherhood. Yeah, because the matrix is, is, is um, metaphysical. So actually, the motherhood is the birthplace for Laozi. And then uh, there's another uh, very important function of Dao's matrix, which is the power of regulating principles. Laozi names it impulses, chongqi. So actually, uh, in Dao De Jing, the original text, uh, we can see that um, wu fu yin er bao yang, chongqi yi wei he. The impulses finally become united. Okay, that's a translated version. Um, so impulse is a combination of yin and yang. We have yin yang er qi. So Dao's matrix holds absolute principles that suppress the exceeded violence of the Dao's impulses in order to keep the harmony of both yin, yin and yang. And that's that's very interesting and that's really important to understand to understand um the function of the matrix and the function of yin and yang and how matrix how how the matrix deals with it and if we can see the relationship between Korra and Dao's matrix we can have these two lines that I put here I think it's a little figure here so the first line represents Taoism the motherhood which is the uterus and the uterus has impulses. And impulses are the combinations of yin and yang. In, uh, and because of yin and yang, we have everything in order, uh, like being produced. So corresponding, uh, corresponding to Kristeva, Chris, Cora is the uterus, and uterus has like a chaos, like chaotic preparations. So the semiotic and the symbolic are the things that cause chaotic uh, preparations. And because we have the semiotic and the symbolic, humanity can be formed. I think the relationship is really clear. 
So the next thing I'm gonna discuss is the DAO's potentiality. Uh, so Christina mentions in her work that Quora is an um, analogous only to vocal or kinetic rhythm. So the question is, what is kinetic rhythm? So we have to, um, it's really essential um, to understand um, that Quora is not that thing. It, it, it is not, uh, it's not that thing. It's not a corpus or something like that. It, it, it's vivid. It's living and energetic. So it is an energetic container that fills out infinite possibilities. I have an example here. So uh, a human female, like a mother, a mother's uterus can only gestate, can only produce two um, biological sex, male or female. I mean, normally speaking, right? But suppose the male represents the symbolic and the female represents the semiotic. Grisliva's Cora, actually, because it's metaphysical. So that it can break the limit and goes beyond the imaginable boundaries in the processing um, generation. Um, meaning that Cora can create something more, can create actually a lot more, like over the semiotic and symbolic. So this is kind of a potentiality. So, and then we can um, correlate it with Taoism, Tao's philosophy, Tao's Dao, potentiality. Laozi uses an um, analogy called hollow valley, Kunggu. So I refer to this scholar, Paul. Paul's paper, actually, he points out that the wisdom of unsayable in Chinese traditions can be noticed in both Taoism and Buddhism, which means that Taoism and Buddhism are like relative, like, like they share some common concepts. If so, I think that that's correct. If we see the cultural exchanges between Taoism and Buddhism, we might, we might find that um, the analogy of hollow valley is an space where allows potentialities happen. So I, I actually, I list um, the two examples here, Zhi Yue Lu and Zhong Jing Lu Xi, the preface. Actually, uh, yeah, so these examples can prove my point. So even though the concepts are different, may, maybe, the maybe, maybe the concepts like Buddhism uses the hollow valley to represent something else, maybe the um I can still use it. Right? Because they actually they indeed share some common features there. So if, for example, if we see uh let's see Zhong Jing Lu Xu, it says Yung Gu Xiang Yan Yin Lun Si Sheng Yan Cho. Gu Xiang, the, the sound of the valley, actually, because because it is a hollow valley, so the sound, so it has it might have um, various types of sound. So the various type of sound actually, it, it represents potentiality. So Quora actually is the hollow valley. So next thing I'm gonna discuss is Zhuangzi's philosophy, Taoist obscurity. If I mention Zhuangzi, actually it's very interesting. I wanna bring um, I want to kind of bring up Descartes' dream argument, Descartes' dream argument um, in his Meditations on First Philosophy. Actually, uh, Descartes' dream argument uh, is really simple because first, Descartes doubts knowledge. He doubts knowledge and he uh, demolishes knowledge. He demolishes everything and then he's trying to reconstruct them. And then the result that he gets actually is dream and reality are, dis, are indistinguishable. Actually, this is a dualism con dualist concept because we can know that dream and reality are different, right? This is very obvious um, according to Descartes. But Zhuangzi actually, Zhuangzi has an has a very interesting argument here, still dream argument. Uh, 
It's very interesting. It's really uh, like uh, beautifully written in Chinese. He says, once you're in a dream, you will not know it. Another dream takes place in this specific dream. 梦之中又站起梦眼. Okay, very beautiful. And you will know, you will not know it until you awaken. This seems like dualism. Because you because we can know that okay, this is a dream, this is a reality. So okay, these are two things, dualism. Mm -hmm. But do you really know that you have been out of your long dream when you had awakened? How funny. Tiu Tiu is the name, uh, because Zhuang is talking to Chang Wuzi. Tiu is the name of Chang Wuzi. Tiu as a being, you as a being, you are all in a dream. You think I'm telling you that you're in a dream? This is a dream as well. So this seems like monism. Like, yeah, because you don't know. You don't know whether you're in a dream or you are in reality. Maybe they are identical. Very interesting. So what is Zhuang Zi saying? We don't know what Zhuang Zi is saying. And Zhuang Zi, maybe he doesn't want us to know what he is saying. Because he knows that his concept is really profound. So Zhuang Zi names this concept Diao Gui. Diao Gui is a really perplexing concept. Um, but briefly, spe briefly speaking, I can uh, interpret it as unstable and unthinkable. Still, we can uh, uh, re relate it with uh, Buddhism. Yeah, because we always see this term book si in Buddhist classics. So is it Zhuangzi's philosophy dualism or monism? We, we, we don't know, maybe both, maybe both. Actually, I just wanna mention one point that I use the term obscurity, not ambiguity. Obscurity means that the concept is very clear, but we cannot really know the profundity of this concept. But ambiguity it sounds like the concept is unclear. We just don't know what the concept is talking about. That's the difference. I just want to mention it. Because I think Zhuangzi's concept is very clear. So it cannot be ambiguous, it's just obscure. So uh, still, uh, um, corresponding to Kristeva's concept, Kora, Kristeva criticizes formalist poetry. Yeah, uh, I mean, in the later portion of his work, uh, of her work, actually, the formalist poetry as being on a rampage in the aftermath of the capitalist mode. So what she's, what she's trying to do, so uh, she is trying to fill out the blank, fill out the gap left by rationality, hoping to define, or we can say redefine poetry as the perfect of the semiotic and the symbolic. But uh, this is my point, my opinion, my point, but a poem is a vivid existence that must be driven by different motivations back and forth. So, which means that just like I said, uh, we cannot, we cannot, okay, merely allow emotionality to, to, to actually to, to lead, to lead our humanity. We have to mix them together. You have to mix emotionality and rationality together to form our humanity. So, which means that if Cora is a, a great metaphysical, vivid receptacle, it means that it, it must allow the semiotic and symbolic to wander around. They have to play around, actually. Demolish and reconstruct over and over. This is a normal process in Cora. Okay, we don't, we, we cannot allow, we can, I mean, sorry, we cannot avoid the violence we cannot avoid the violence between uh, the semiotic and body, but we can actually suppress the violence, right? That's different. So I say that there is no stable pos position in Korra. Okay, we cannot find the, um, the yeah, the, 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 like the, 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 the steady, no. So in conclusion, Christopher's Korra actually shares common features with Chinese Taoism, and then I, so uh, at the very beginning, I, I, I um, explained the semiotic Quran, the concept of the semiotic Quran, Kristeva's concept, because it's really complicated. And then I actually uh, discussed Laozi's matrix, 
母体. And then I um um uh, um in um uh, introduced the potentiality, like I use the analogy of hollow valley, right? Um correlating with uh Christopher's Cora. And then the, the last thing I said it, uh, was Zhuangzi's obscurity. Okay. So Zhuangzi's obscurity, like Zhuangzi's dream argument, comp is, is, is very obscure, I mean, compared to Descartes' dream argument. So that um, Cora has the same um, characteristic uh, with, with Zhuangzi's obscurity. So, um, at the very end, I believe that okay, uh, there there might be some like more uh, res research about like how Western philosophy or Western psychoanalysis um interpenetrate with Chinese philosophy or Chinese whatever Chinese Taoism or Chinese uh, fa jia, not not legalism fa jia. So I think this is a very um important topic. Yeah. And thank you so much.